So in the previous video, you have learned density and how to calculate density of different mixture of liquids. All right. So think of boba. Boba has many types of, uh, I don't know, a layer of uh, sugar and milk and tea. And also we have some solid suspended inside, etc, etc. So once we get the idea of a density, we can then move on about what is the exact pressure acting on the boba under the all the layer of matcha and okay la, go grab yourself a drink okay and come and watch this lecture video so let's first talk about what pressure is this is probably a refresher you already understand or probably already have ideas about pressure before you watch this la. maybe like in your previous science studies okay so we define pressure okay uh just based off this diagram so when you think about pressure i want you to think about the shoes that you wear okay look at your feet are you wearing shoes okay probably you're not wearing shoes because you stay at home now but if let's say you're wearing shoes and you're wearing those really high high heel shoes you know fancy looking shoes that look like this so like wow so cool and for the gentlemen you probably will be wearing very narrow shoes as well now if you remember the last time you wore those kind of shoes your feet really hurt right do you know why your feet hurts if you think about this part of the shoe this part here okay or even worse this part here it actually cramps the joints of your feet all right so when we when there's that clamping down effect here okay the area here is small compared to you know if your feet is allowed to expand to its full width so you tend to feel a bit more stable when there is a larger surface area and also there is a more surface area so that the pressure can spring so if area is small there is large pressure so ideally we want shoes they don't look very nice i mean i guess but you want your feet to be able to have good contact with the floor in the stance of a tripod think of the stability of your feet so next time when you buy shoes or if you still have to wear shoes like this or god forbid like this this is even worse because you know there's this very small area and there's a lot of pressure down here it's an area small okay so here area small try to think of your feet your feet prefers to have a wide base of support but the whole takeaway here is if you have a small area your pressure is very large not good for your joints but i think if we go back to this diagram okay we can see that uh pressure p has the inverse relationship with area if the area is small the pressure is large not good for your feet so you want white toe shoes white toe box okay and of course you can notice that people who are a bit heavier so if let's say right you're like teacher i wear high heel i'm okay one i uh, that's because you're an asian lady 45 kg all right i am not a 45 kg asian lady okay i am pretty heavy set my bones are heavy okay so i have la more more force pressing down because this force is related to weight so the larger the force the larger the pressure that's why pressure has the relationship of force per unit area but that's the definition okay so i'm gonna draw a box around it and this thing is defined as force per unit area so let me write that down right perpendicular force per unit area and the unit for this is pascal named after blaise pascal i don't know whether i'm pronouncing his name right but the symbol is pa and uh you could also use newton per meter square okay force is newton area is meter square these are obviously a scale this is obviously a scalar quantity pressure no direction one right the force got direction pressure don't have okay all right another thing about this uh idea is that this force is perpendicular all right so when we come to perpendicular forces in this case obviously this force and this area is 90 degree or so no problem but sometimes maybe you know you have a different scenario let's say for example now we have an inclined plane like so 
plane, you have the inclined plane, and then you have on the flat surface. So let's say I want to find the area exerted due at the bottom of this cylinder. I mean, not area, sorry, pressure exerted here. What is the pressure here? So of course, you are thinking of using force per unit area, but the force that is pushing down on this is your mg. So this will be mg over the area A. This one is the cross-section area A. But if I place it on a tilted inclined plane, as you have already familiar with the inclined plane in the previous subtopics, you will notice that not all the forces is acting perpendicular to this surface. Okay, so to find the force that is 90 degree to the surface, you need to resolve. Oh? You will have one component in this direction. This is 90. Okay, and you have another component down the inclined plane that may or may not cause the block to accelerate down. Who knows? Maybe you got friction. Okay, so if this is the case, right, then if let's say this is mg, this will be theta. So hopefully you are quite familiar. We're going to take this because this force is 90 degree to this surface. Okay, so this will be mg cos theta. So this pressure is not equal to mg over A. It is mg cos theta divided by A, where A is the area of the cylinder. Lah. Okay, huh? so this is what they mean by perpendicular. Make sure your force and your area is 90 degree. Because only the force that is pressing down that is the one that exerts pressure. All right. Okay, so we talk about this pressure derivation, but they are not we don't stop here because this is pressure, a general representation. This is a general equation. But I want to focus or zoom in or use this general equation to prove the relationship between hydrostatic pressure and uh, ideas like height and density of fluid. Okay, but before that, let's have a thought experiment first. So in this setup, you will see a tall water cylinder and you can see the water as I play, the water will come out, but at different pressure. Okay, so we look at it again. Okay, let me slow it down. So you can see that the water at the lowest part will shoot the furthest, and then the water at the highest, the hole at the highest, will shoot the least far. Okay, less far. All right. So I kind of like want you to think about what is the force that is pushing the water out, how does it relate to your idea about force per unit area? And we will look at the derivation of hydrostatic pressure in the next video. We'll try some questions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, and by the way, link to this video will be in the description. See ya, folks.